Okay, your first presentation today will be the results of the Air Emissions Research Study, and this is going to be presented to you by uh, Dr. Aaron Cordes from South Dakota State University and by Dr. Spies from USDA Meat Animal Research Center. As Beth said, I'm Mindy Spies from USDA, and with me is Aaron Cordes, and we we're very excited, of course, to present the results of our air emissions study. And um, Beth has already done some of the acknowledgments, but Aaron and I really wanted you to know that even though we have the opportunity to be here to present the results, this really, really was a team effort, and we do appreciate all of our colleagues that, that helped get us to this point. So, uh, we, this obviously is a very big study, and we don't have time to, to share with you all of our results today. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of give you the background of why we did this, how we did it, and then we're going to talk about some of our, our key findings from the study and, and how, they, um, how they really apply to burn management and design, and then we want to follow up with, with what's next, what's next for us and what's next for you. So, why did we do this? Um, you know, most, most everyone here today, um, if you're here for a beef facilities conference, you're probably familiar with the monoslope barns. And, you know, we, we know a lot of things about them, we know that, but there's also a lot of variability in the, the manure and the bedding management and the type of bedding that is used. And so, we, what we really didn't know was anything about, about emissions or gas concentrations in these barns. And so we were really interested in learning about that. And what I, I have up here is uh, a chart about the, the temperature variation that we had while we were doing this study. And one of the reasons why these barns are so popular in, in this region is because we do have extreme, extreme temperature. And you know, these are just seasonal averages that range from highs of, and summertime highs in the high 80s to you know, hovering around 10 degrees in the winter. And of course, on any individual day, we know that those temperatures can be more extreme. We know that gas concentrations increase with increasing temperature, and so we would expect, with this kind of temperature variability, we also have a lot of variability in our emissions. And so that was one of the reasons we were also interested in doing this. And there's a lot of factors that affect um, gas and dust concentrations in livestock facilities. It includes you know, things that have to do with the climate, the animals, and the, the building and the manure management. And, um, and so when we first started on this project, we wanted to, to not really try to do a true comparative study between a monoslope barn and an open lot feedlot, but what we really wanted to do is get some baseline, baseline information about these monoslope barns and correlate it to as much of this information as we could to collect some environmental data at the same time that we were collecting some air emission data. So that's how we, we tried to set up the project. But before we did that, we, um, we had an advisory committee, and they were very, very helpful to us, um, as, as Beth has mentioned. And we, we brought this group together, and we said, you know, what, what would you like us to look at? And, and one of the things that they were really concerned about was, was regulations, particularly with ammonia and particulate matter or dust. And we're just going to talk about regulations later, so I don't need to spend any time on that. But it just suffice to say that the, there was a lot of concern that there wasn't any information from these barns and there was potential regulations for it. So we were looking to, to fill that, that void of information. Um, There's also a lot of concern about um, how the air emissions change in relation to cattle production. Uh, do they change throughout the day? Are there different during different seasons? And at the end of the day, the, the advisory committee just they said, you know, we just want to make sure that these barns are being managed the best way they can. And so their question to us was, are we doing it right? And so that was what we really set out to answer. So those were some very large questions to answer. And this is the way that we approached answering some of these questions. Well, first of all, our approach involved going out and getting some funding to do this research. And uh, Beth has acknowledged that, and again, I just want to throw out a thanks to uh, Dr. Nikolai and the Stakeholder Advisory Committee for really making our case. I mean, I think our audience here is a, is a testament to, to the need for more information about these facilities, but we still had that to make that case to the national USDA, right? And so we really want to acknowledge that. Uh, the purpose of the, the research, our, our research objectives going into this, was first to collect some 
baseline, some long-term baseline data from some beef confinement facilities. And I say long-term because of those temperature extremes and, and the way that uh, our management can change over time. We wanted it to be as long-term as possible and as many variables as possible. Through that, we also wanted to try and gather some more information to start to look at, well, how we manage the manure in these facilities. How does that affect our air quality? And so we, we looked at complete confinement facilities, wherein all the cattle were completely under, were, were in under roof the whole time. And we looked at two, two main forms of manure management. The first was a weekly scrape and haul. So at these facilities, the manure and bedding was uh, removed completely from the barn on a weekly basis. In the bed pack systems, the bed pack uh, manure bedding was allowed to accumulate in the middle of the pens over time, over months, um, even years. The area around the bed packs was cleaned on a, on a weekly, bi-weekly basis, but uh, basically the majority of the manure was left in the barn. So as we go through today's presentation, you're going to hear us refer to them as great barns and pack barns. And while they're not representative of every single way you might scrape a barn or let a bed pack develop, um, that's what we're talking about um, when we talk about scraping bed packs. 